wonder why sometimes you love or adore someone. And there are some people that, you know, you met them and you don't like them or dislike them. In fact, some people actually triggers you. In my first episode of Monday Inspiration, I talk about how, you know, I want to be Oprah and she's on my dream board. And she's someone that I admire and adore, right? I also admire Ellen DeGeneres. I admire the Dalai Lama, His Holiness the Dalai Lama. I admire Mother Teresa, Gandhi and for just what they stand and who they are. And also, there are leaders in the world that I dislike. So I started asking myself, what's the reason? I like some of them and I dislike some of them. It is not until I started working on myself that I have clarity about it. Everyone we meet is our mirror. What happens outside of us is actually really what's happening inside of us. There is a saying that goes, we can only see things within others that we see within ourselves. So what's happening is they are reflecting back to us what are parts of us that we like about ourselves and parts of us that we don't like about ourselves. So let's talk about the parts that we dislike about ourselves, okay? Because they're really just reflecting that. So I'll give you an example. Growing up, somehow I've come to have this belief, and you might have heard this in other parts of my sharing, that I thought I'm stupid and incapable. And so what would happen is, if I were to meet someone who is incapable or who is not really smart or I would consider stupid and useless, they will trigger me. Like I consider their behavior being very inefficient is being useless and therefore it would trigger me. But what I didn't realize is that person is just reflecting a part of me that I've come to believe that exists, which may not be true, but I believe that I am somewhat like that. And therefore, when the reflection comes, I get really triggered or annoyed. And the trigger and annoyance or frustration is really because we could not accept that part of us. We could not acknowledge that part of us. And that's what happens. So growing up, having that belief, what I did was I wanted to prove that, that I'm not so. So as you can see, the result of it was, you know, I got a PhD to prove that I'm not stupid, I'm really smart, that's why I'm capable and I can do that. But that part of me continues to be there, right? And the irony is this, it's when I allow myself to acknowledge it, it's when it starts to heal. So as much as sometimes there are parts of us that we don't like to look at, it is just calling out for help and asking us to look at it so that we could heal it. So we will continue to attract people a situation that keeps reflecting that part that we dislike until we actually work through it. So one way is to let go of that belief. And that's what I did. I let go of that belief that I'm not smart, or I'm stupid, and shift that into an empowering belief. When I started working on that, events like you know attracting people in my life that are reflecting that doesn't happen anymore. So I started attracting people uh, that's aligned with a belief. So when I started believing I am capable, I'm smart, people around me started acknowledging me for that. Now, there are also times where if I believe I'm stupid, what's going to happen is, you know, I, my behavior is going to reflect that. But I will attract people in my life to show me how capable they are and how incapable I am. Again, it is not really who you are. Is this something you learned or you've come to believe is true about who you are? And they're just reflecting it back to you. And the idea is to, you know, learn to let that belief go or shift that and then shift into something powerful or empowering. I'll give you some other example. So if let's say your partner is someone who is competitive and you're really annoyed with your, his competitiveness or her competitiveness, it is just telling you perhaps you are also competitive. It's not about right or wrong, it's just information for you. So if you actually have a partner who is insecure and it's fearful and you get triggered and annoyed about it, it's just a reflection for you to say, oh, you know, maybe there's a part of me who is insecure and is afraid of something, right? So just remember, it is just a reflection for you and information for you to just learn about yourself. And the idea is to acknowledge it. And when you own it, it's where you can grow. Each of these traits gives you a lesson. There's a gift in it, okay? So the key is to look for the lesson in it, just like me. I had that belief, which I thought it was true. But what did it get me? It got me a PhD, right? I learned a lot throughout my 
uh, educational life and that's the gift I got from it. So there's a gift in every of these traits. On the other hand, when you see the positive qualities in people, they're also reflecting that back to you. You see what's in them is actually what's in you. So let's come back to Oprah. I love Oprah from the day I met her and saw her show. And I started writing down, you know, what about Oprah that I love? I love her for being real. I love her for her kindness and compassion. I love her for her tenacity and resilience. I love her for her inspiration. I think she's a very inspiring person. Um, for example, Ellen DeGeneres too. I love her for her humor. I love her for play. I love her for her resilience too, having heard her story and what she's gone through. And definitely I love her for her generosity. Uh, she demonstrated that through her show. And so when I started writing that, I started realizing I too have those qualities inside me. So they're just reflecting it back to me, right? And now a very quick note here, if you're annoyed with somebody's positive quality, so for example, if you know someone who is kind and giving, yet you're really annoyed for them being kind and giving. What's really telling you, it, what's the reflection is, you know, there is a part of you who's kind and giving, maybe you haven't been able to express it. And that's the information. So, uh, and, and you've been resisting it. So the key is actually to embrace that part of you. So to end this short teaching, I would like to invite you to do the following. First of all, you know, I would like to invite you to start writing down who are the people that triggers you, annoys you and write down what are the things that they do that triggers you, annoys you. That is an opportunity for you to get to know yourself. It is until when you acknowledge those parts of you, and like I mentioned, there is a gift in everything, okay? And the key thing is also not to judge yourself, remember? It's something you've come to experience or come to believe that's who you are, okay? For me, I believe every one of us is born a leader, we're born amazing, gorgeous, so aren't you acknowledge that you will see some of this trick will stop triggering you, okay? And the second part is, you know, start writing down those um, people that you adore and love. What are the qualities that they have? What are the positive qualities that they have? And when you start writing them down, it's time for you to embrace those qualities because you know what? They are within you. Time for you to shine and time for you to embrace those qualities in you and to share them with the world. Thank you for watching and I'll see you on the next video. Please subscribe and share our videos.